So let's look at taking a blood pressure. When we take a blood pressure, there's a few different options. We can use a digital, which looks a bit like this. Um, you can get much bigger ones. You can get ones that just apply to the wrist. Um, we have a few different models here at Enos. So this one here is just the standard. There's also a premium and a deluxe, which is a bit bigger and has a few more features with it. And then the wrist one as well. Now, a lot of hospitals will use the digital. Uh, it makes it nice and easy. It's simply, as long as you apply the cuff correctly, all you have to do is hit start and your blood pressure readout will be there for you. But there's always gonna be a time where you need to double check that reading. So you need to know how to do a manual blood pressure. So a sphygmo manometer comes in a few different varieties. Uh, we don't sell them here at eNurse, but you've probably seen them at some of the GP offices and it's called a vertical sphygma manometer so it actually has that vertical column of mercury so it's like a rectangular case it opens up and the column of mercury goes vertically uh, and the cuff and everything's included in there so we only sell the actual handheld ones we have a standard which is like this so it has the two tubes one with the bulb one with the gauge on it which is just a standard sphig. And then we have a single-handed sphig, which as the name implies, only requires a single hand. So the bulbs attached to the actual meter itself. Both are just as accurate and it purely comes down to personal preference. I have to say, I've never actually seen one of these in the clinical setting when I was um, nursing, but I uh, certainly saw plenty of the standard ones with the two tubes like this. So I'm going to go through a few tips on using the blood pressure cuff, uh, particularly if you haven't used it before um, or if you've only used it a few times. There are a couple of little tricks to make sure that you get that cuff to inflate and also get the gauge to read. Um, so let's jump into it. So here we have our standard cuff because it has the two tubes, one to the bulb, one to the gauge. So you might be able to just see the edge just here. Hopefully that shows up where you can see the edge of the bladder inside. So inside here is a bladder about this big. This is what actually goes around the arm and as it inflates and it's wrapped around with the Velcro, it compresses on the artery. Um, so that's what's causing that occlusion. And then as we release the pressure, it allows the blood flow to come back through. So we can start to hear those sounds that measure the systolic and diastolic pressures. Now, as I mentioned, there's a bulb and here is a valve. So you may have heard the expression righty tidy, lefty loosey. It applies for this as well. So when you're about to inflate this, one thing I'll demonstrate first is that even if this is tightened all the way up and I start to pump it up, my bladder here will inflate, but as you notice, nothing happens on the gauge. And the reason for that is, is that the cuff isn't actually being applied. So we actually need a resistant pressure for the gauge to read. So if you've bought one of these and you're pumping away and thinking, hang on, it's broken, the gauge doesn't work, try popping it on somebody and I'm sure you'll find that the gauge will work beautifully. It's right, I can edit it. <laughs> um, cool. So similar to the standard, if you opt in for the single hand, then it's the same anatomy. There's a cuff that goes to about here. You might even be able to see through that because the canvas is a little bit lighter. So again, this bladder will inflate. Obviously, once it's put into the correct position, it's wrapped around the person's arm. It's a little bit tighter than that. <laughs> it's wrapped around the person's arm. Need to turn this to tighten it. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And once that's actually on an arm with some pressure resistance and you start to pump, the gauge will go up. But again, because we're not on an arm, it's not going to actually show a change in measurement here. So we need to pop that on an arm, which I'll demonstrate shortly. So when we're applying the cuff, you need to apply it about two and a half centimetres above the cubital fossa. And if you remember me talking about the arrows, so this is for the left arm 
This is for the right arm to follow the brachial artery. So in this instance, we're using the right arm. So the brachial artery is about here. So we want this arrow to line up with the brachial artery. So once that's in place, you can get your patient to turn the hand over. Um, so first we want to palpate the radial pulse, uh, so we get an indication of where the systolic reading will be. And on the back of this, you can use that as a clip and you can release if you don't have a little tag like this on your cuff. So this one will allow me just to slip that in there so that it's fairly easy to see. So I'm going to find the radial pulse and make sure that that's closed. So righty tighty lefty loosey, so it's sealed up. So I'm feeling for the radial pulse and when it stops, it gives me an indication of where his systolic measure will be. Because we've already compressed the artery, we want to give it about 30 seconds to come back to normal. Um, so that cut out at about 130. So that lets me know that I need to pump up to about 20 or 30 millimetres of mercury higher than that. So about 150, 160 should be sufficient. Um, and within about 20, as it drops, I should hear the systolic come in. So you can use either side of the stethoscope. You can use the diaphragm or the bell. Um, I personally use the diaphragm side, um, but um, some people do prefer the bell. So again, just make sure your valve is closed nice and tight. We want to pump up to about 150, 160. really slowly release. Yep. So I can hear the systolic, the sounds first come in. Go a little bit faster. And then completely release it once the sound disappears. Now it's really important to tell your patient what the reading is. Everybody wants to know what it was, so that was 130 on 65. Thanks for watching. I hope that's been helpful to give you a few little tips on how to get your cuff to inflate, how to position it and how to get an accurate blood pressure reading on your patient. If you have any questions, if you're having any difficulties with your cuff, um, please feel free to give us a call here at eNurse. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you'd like to get a few more uh, tips on how to use diagnostic equipment and much, much more.